Uh, we're going to head to our press reviewer, Deepti Laurent, who joins us in the studio. She's going to take us through the early reactions in the media to these midterm elections. Uh, and Deepti, you are starting with Ron DeSantis, whose landslide victory in Florida is getting quite a bit of attention. That's right. It's getting a lot of attention in the Florida press. Allison, this is the front page of the Miami Herald. He's on the front there. Uh, Florida goes all in. Uh, the paper uh, announces on its uh, on its front page, but also on its website, uh, noting that Florida was won twice by Barack Obama in the past, but since 2016 has really turned in favor of the Republicans. And while DeSantis was targeted uh, for his support, for instance, on the 15-week uh, abortion ban, uh, ultimately abortion was overshadowed by more pressing issues like inflation, uh, um, crime and gas prices, at least more pressing in the eyes of the voters there, uh, issues that DeSantis had really honed in and that ultimately helped him uh, win uh, his state. It's a red wave, though, at least in Florida, as you see uh, on the front of uh, Miami Herald, uh, because uh, Maria Elvira Salazar uh, was re-elected to her House of Representatives uh, seat and Senator Marco Rubio won his seat. It's also on the front page of uh, the Tampa Bay Times, which uh, signals a, uh, a Republican rout, really. Uh, and it's something that is also uh, the uh, focus of this editorial from the Wall Street Journal today, which uh, announces what it calls a DeSantis Florida tsunami. Uh, the paper saying the results were not surprising, but nonetheless symbolic. Uh, he was always predicted to win, but certainly the way he won uh, will uh, lay the groundwork, no doubt, for a uh, for the 2024 presidential campaign if he decides to run, and if Donald Trump also decides to run, it could set them up for uh, an interesting um, uh, interesting battle. Uh, you also have the Washington Post. Uh, which uh, is, I, the Tampa Bay Times might have spoken of a, a route in Florida, but it's certainly not the case everywhere. And this is something that the Washington Post is picking up on today. The vaunted red wave never really hit the shore in the midterm elections. And we're seeing that by how um, how close the results for both chambers are right now. Uh, in any case, uh, the Washington Post says that the these midterms have not only been a referendum on Joe Biden, but on uh, the Republicans and America itself. And these are, after all, the first ballots since riders attacked the Capitol in January last year and the first election since the Supreme Court uh, ended its constitutional right to abortion. A similar headline from the New York Times today, which says the GOP gains an edge, but its expectations dim. So we're certainly seeing uh, very much the sentiment that the Republicans have not done uh, as well uh, or as it was predicted, or at least that, that red wave we're expecting has not, for the moment, come through. Yeah, I like that Washington Post headline, the red wave that never hit the shore. Uh, elsewhere, Deep D, other candidates have been breaking barriers with their victories. That's right. The website Vox is looking at this, Allison. This is uh, a whole uh, bunch of uh, candidate, uh, a whole bunch of winners, really, from these midterms. Uh, Maxwell Alejandro Frost, who you see here in this article from uh, Vox, he's the first Gen Z member of uh, Congress, a 25-year-old community organizer uh, who won his House seat uh, in Florida. His win adds to the House's uh, generational diversity, Vox says, uh, where the average age of a member is about 58 years old and uh, more than 80% uh, are, are people between the ages of 40 and 80 years old. He's also the first Afro-Cuban member of Congress, which still remains 75 percent white. Now, another person making headlines today is Kathy Hochul, uh, Hochul uh, who uh, won her seat for uh, the state of New York. She's the first woman to be elected uh, governor uh, of uh, the state of New York. The Democrat Hochul became governor in, in August 2021. You'll remember when uh, uh, then-Governor Andrew Cuomo was forced to resign over sexual harassment allegations. Uh, the New York Times noting that Hochul spent millions of dollars in TV ads to highlight her Republican opponent's anti-abortion stance and ties to Donald Trump. And in a blue state, that effort paid dividends for her. You also have this very symbolic uh, victory on the front page of the Boston Globe uh, of Mara Healy, who, accomp who accomplished her victory uh, in the state of uh, um, uh, Massachusetts. She's now been elected governor there. She's the first female governor of Massachusetts and the first openly gay person uh, elected to that. And her win actually flips the state back to the Democrats after it was held by the Republicans for the past eight years, Allison. 
And DP, now that these midterms are over, all of the focus has already turned uh, to that 2024 presidential election. That's right. And indeed, uh, we do get the feeling, at least that looking uh, at the USA Today's uh, front page, that the midterms really set the tone for the next two years. Uh, USA Today says it's only going to get louder, and it notes that restless voters, uh, deep divisions, and politics of fear are really setting us up for uh, the next two years heading into those presidential elections. This is a, a cartoon we found uh, online there, and you, you sort of see uh, the, the sentiment there that, okay, the midterms are over. We're already focusing on the presidential elections, and certainly these midterms, at least for the illustrated press, have been uh, really overshadowed or influenced by Donald Trump, who's sort of hovering over it without actually taking part. Here he is uh, basically sitting himself down in the White House in 2024, and you have uh, this one here. Uh, a lot more symbolic with the shadow of Donald Trump hovering over these midterms, Alison. All right, Deep D, thank you very much for taking us through the early reactions in the American press to the midterm election results. That was Deep Dika Laurent. I also want to thank uh, Martin Quincy uh, from the German Marshall Fund of the United States for joining us with his analysis, and of course, our international affairs editor, Angela Diffley. Uh, that's it from me and the team, but stay with us here on France 24. We'll have the latest updates right after the break. <laughs>